Would you believe that a single canvas can hold a story that can be written in a favorite page book? Well, that is what we all enjoy in this video. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. That is the Jewish version of the creation story. Only God knows how many creature stories there are. Hi, lovely entities. Lovely entities. I will have to explain myself in the comment section for calling you guys lovely entities. Yeah, I know. I don't want to go through that. But I'm like, if I said this, one for each, can you please tell us the meaning of lovely entities? Do you really understand what you meant by lovely entities? I was privileged to have an exclusive visit to my brother Mark's studio in Kokov Montego. I saw some artworks there and it was fascinating to check them out. While checking them, I spent more time on one of them than I did with the others. That particular artwork is what I want us all to enjoy the story behind its creation today. Are you ready? Hi lovely people, my name is Olaoye Popola. In this video, I will be reviewing the art piece titled of Basala by Ujo Ademola. But before we dive in, I would truly appreciate it if everybody that hasn't subscribed to this channel can subscribe now. Because as of the last time I checked, 99% of you lovely people hasn't subscribed yet. Please subscribe now and be part of the beginning of the beginning of this channel. Thank you. There is nothing more satisfied than seeing an artwork that carries substantial essence. When I saw this artwork, I was completely wild. I was like, he may no she you for a long me. Each and every time I set my eyes on the masterpiece, I always ask one question, which is, Mr. Artist, what is the inspiration behind this work? If you look at this art as a whole, it seems so complex. That is because it captures a story that could be written on a 500 pages book on a single canvas. Yet, it's very simple. Since every single element of this canvas has its own message, let's start from the top. The central idea for this artwork is the creation story from the Yoruba perspective. However, before the artist arrived at this point, his very first was, who is the first man? Who formed the first man? Who is the first man clay? This question made them so restless. And that is because questions of this nature can activate the chaki mode in the mind of an artist, where they wander into both known and the unknown world. But at the end of the journey, it always worth it. In the end, Animal Lodge decided to use his Yoruba perspective to narrate the creation story. He believes it's the only medium with which he will not need to translate any word from one language to another, thereby losing his senses or not standing as studious as it was in the original language. Looking at this art as a whole, you will see a half cut over shaped element to which every other element of this art is attached. The half cut over shaped elements look like a human head. But it's very difficult to call it a human head since it's void of every other component that made a human head. I think it's safe to say that it's a dreamland head. Because in a dreamland, there's endless possibilities. Both the body and the disembodied entity can collaborate beyond the scope of rationality. This part of the over shaped element, which is supposed to be the forehead outside the brain that bestow with the duties of rationality, if this is a complete human head, contains several other elements. What I will touch on first is the one from which the has got its name, Obatala. Obatala is a god that went to the Supreme God, Elidu Mari, to seek permission to handle the work of the creation which was granted unto him. He also consulted the firstborn of Elidu Mari, Oromela, who is god of prophecy, wisdom, and knowledge. Before Obatala took on this task, heaven was ruled by Elidu Mari, while the below was ruled by Onokun, the goddess of the sea. The below was not habitable for most living creatures since it was full of water. That is why Obatala seek wisdom beyond himself to carry out this task. As such, Oromela, the god of prophecy, knowledge and wisdom is the right person to consult. Orumila gave Obatala the list of Kario and the best approach for the task. The first challenge was how to navigate from heaven to the navigable heads. For this, Orumila told him to get a snake shell filled with health, a white hen, a palm nut, and a chain whose could reach the navigable head to descend with. The instruction was to pour the sand from the snake shell to allow the hen to spread it. Wherever the hen was able to spread it to is where the head will dominate water. He dropped a palm nut on the floor and it grew into palm tree. The palm tree immediately started producing fruits which fell and grew into other palm trees. When he continued with his task, Obatala became drunk from the palm wine he produced from the palm tree and he was unable to complete his task. As a result, he was given another task which is to create human. In the process of creating human, he became drunk again and created a lot of human with deformities. The eye-shaped part of this art tells us so much about the urban narration of the creation story. Inside this eye-shaped element, there are numerous tales. The human figure on the white garment holding his staff, the heaven where he was coming from, the created earth, and the palm trees that reproduces itself. Remember that in the creation story, Obatana was given another task which is the creation of human. He created some that are perfect, but when he gets dropped from palm wine the second time, he created some with deformity. The hair, the proportional new rights represent the perfect creation. But if you look at the nose and the mouth, they look perfect. 
But there's another thing. They are not where they're supposed to be and they are not facing the direction they are supposed to face. This is because the artist which are demona is using the nose and the mouth to represent the creation with deformities. Artists who make extensive research into the art they are creating are not doing trial and error. They've already finished the work in their imagination before even approaching the canvas. Africa, south of Sahara, the soil on which majority of Yoruba people reside, was represented in all the color used all over this artwork. Why the African continent is so blessed and is so different from every other continent? You can stand in the same place and see up to three different soil color, which show the richness and beauty being represented. This particular art could have been from any culture, or telling story from any culture in there are no striped looking elements. They are not just trying life for aesthetic reason, they represent identity. This lies are ethnic mark of the king lineage. In the ancient days, you don't necessarily need to tell people where you're from in every region of the Yoruba kingdom. From your appearance and the ethnic mark on your face, people can tell of your origin. So, the ethnic mark on this art and the only thing that can make anyone see with confidence that this artwork is telling the creation story from the Yoruba perspective. From the high shade elements, to the human figure, palm tree, the sky, the head, the proportionally perfect hair, the deformed mouth and nose, the ethnic mark, and the choice of color. Ujo Ademola, the artist, is interpreting the Yoruba creation story on canvas. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you next episode.